uh, the late architect of Bill Gates was John. He was my roommate. Was your roommate? My roommate was the architect wow. of Bill Gates. So you could have been the, 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 the architect, architect of Bill of Gates Bill if you Gates. stayed Absolutely. in the US, huh? Absolutely. Wow, great. Hi, my name is Mustafa Njai, and this is the Real Estate Lifestyle by Taf. I'll be sharing my experiences not only from the work that I have done from over the past 48 years, but some of my successes and failures in the hope that I will inspire and motivate all of you to dream big. It will be shared on all my social media handles, so don't forget to follow, like, share, and subscribe to any handle of your choice. Good afternoon. Today I have um, an African blue whale. You know what I did was um, uh, when I knew that he was going to come I, for an interview, I would allow him to introduce himself. I went. I had to Google up the right word to use that is bigger than a giant, because my guest today is bigger than a giant, and uh, the interview will reveal this. So. I will address him as a blue whale because they say the blue whale is much bigger than a giant. So, so the gentleman I have here today in front of me is an African blue whale. And let me just allow him to introduce himself. Africa vibrates with age-old energy. Its land covers a fifth of the planet, and at the very beginning of its history, Africa was the cradle of the human species. But there is no history without revolutions. There is a man whose destiny holds the answer. His name is Atepa. And today, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of his action. He embodies both the greatness of history and the greatness of man for having included Africa back in the world stage. Dedicated to making the African continent a decisive player in the emerging millennium. And here is his story. It began in 1972 with the first engineering diploma. In 1973, he earned the prestigious architecture degree at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York. In 1977, he founded the first act of his action in Dakar, the Atepa Group. He created the Pont de Lyons there and became the winner of the most prestigious international competition. Next comes the building of the Central Bank of West African States, erected in Dakar in 1985. In 1996, the complete construction of Banjul Airport established Atepa as one of the world's greatest architects. In 2010, dominating the sky of Dakar at a height of 52 meters, the African Renaissance Monument, a solid bronze statue, underlines the international dimension of the Atepa signature. In 2014, Atepa built the prestigious Place de la Nation in the center of the capital, Najamana, which has definitely changed the face of the city. Well, that's very difficult for me. <laughs> yeah, but tell them your name, who you are. I well, will ask you I am the questions. Pierre Guriabi Atepa, and uh, well, I'm an engineer and an architect. Engineer and architect. And I, uh, I introduce myself as an architect for the development of Africa. Mm -hmm. That's all. But before we get there, uh, Per, I mean, I think it's, it's nice. Why, why don't we start with, with your age? Because, you know, I, you look quite young. Probably even younger than me. <laughs> so, oh. so, 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 you know, it's good to, to, to just tell people, I mean, I know for ladies, people don't want to, to, to tell them their age. I was born back in 1947. So that makes it 76 and counting. Wow, I got, 76. I mean, you look good for. So, and I've been working for 50 years, five zero this year. Wow, and he says 50 years. But let, let's start first with your educational background. Because what I want here 
is that there are young Africans who are always looking for role models. The simple question they always ask, oh, I want to be like you, how can I be like you? Very simple, you just have to work hard. You have to work hard? That's all. You know, I remember when I was back at school, we had this uh, priest, uh, because it was a Catholic school, that used to tell us that, well, if you want to make it, la clé du succès, c'est le travail. Mm -hmm. Work is the key to success. Yes. Work, work, hard work yeah. I had today because work, my time you could work and be successful. Today you have to work hard mm -hmm. in order to be successful. Yeah. So the key to success is work, hard work, serious work, no compromise. Excellent. So you are 76 years old. How about nationality? What's your nationality? Well, I'm a, I'll say I'm an African. An African. But I am a Senegalese, mm -hmm. a Senegambian, as mm -hmm. they would say. Mm -hmm. So I depict myself as an African. Great. But, but are you are Senegalese. So Senegalese I am from is Senegal. You're from Senegal. You were born. I am Senegalese. Yeah. I was born, educated there. Yeah. And uh, 1968, I went to America. Mm -hmm. Rensselaer Polytechnic, studied engineering and architecture. That's it. So, so, so in 1968, after you've completed your high school education, I guess, mm -hmm. you went to the U.S.? Yes. So when you, you went to the U.S., and which institution did you, did you go into? Rensselaer Polytechnic is uh, probably one of the three, four, five major engineering schools mm -hmm. in America. As a matter of fact, it was the number one engineering school which was founded back in 1824. Wow. So I had the scholarship, I won a scholarship. And uh, actually I won three scholarships. Mm -hmm. I had one to go to France, one to go to Canada, and one to go to the US. And mm -hmm. I chose the US one. Because, of course, I understood very, very early that it's good to speak French. Mm -hmm. But English is part of the key to success. Great. Because of the world, and especially today, mm -hmm. if you don't speak English, you're a handicap, mm -hmm. which I didn't want to have then. Mm -hmm. So I went to America because one of my professors was, from, uh, was working for the Peace Corps, and we became very good friends. And when I had my baccalaureate, as they call it, I went direct Mm -hmm. to Brattleboro, Vermont. So mm -hmm. I left 30 degrees mm -hmm. and I landed at minus 30. Wow. So well, this what is how it all started, yes. So, so in the US... Back so in 1968, yes. 68, and I guess at that time you were, you were what, 20, what? 21. 21 years old. And then how long did you take you to, to study? Five years, four to be an engineer, five to be an architect, and then I came back right away. I had, of course, many offers to stay in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to give you, to give you a hint, uh, the late architect of Bill Gates was John, he was my roommate. Was your roommate? My roommate was the architect wow. of Bill Gates. So you could have been the, 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 the architect, architect of Bill of Gates if you stayed Absolutely. in the US, huh? Absolutely. Wow, great. Which I did not do, I came back because mm -hmm. to me, we Africans who have had the uh, the chance of being trained outside. We need to come back and give back to Africa. Mm -hmm. Because of course at that time my parents could not pay. Mm -hmm. The fees for Rensselaer at that time. Yep. Was the, at that time it was $25,000 a year, wow. 50 years ago. Yep. 55 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was $25,000, which is equivalent today to $200. $200,000. Wow. So I couldn't do it, so I had a scholarship. And to me, if you benefit from a scholarship, it's mm -hmm. not for you. Mm -hmm. It's for your people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I understood very fast. So right after that, I came back and uh, start doing my thing, as they would say in America. And I was very lucky because we entered a scholarship with a friend of mine, Chef Ngam. And we won the first uh, prize of the, uh, an international competition mm -hmm. that engaged a lot of architects from all over the world. And we won it. It was to build a central bank. 
I was 29. Wow. And uh, well, the rest is history. I will just remind that at that time, we did a 23-story building in Dakar, Senegal, all Africans. At that time in Dubai, the tallest building was 10-story built, mm -hmm. it was a 10-story high. Mm -hmm. And this is to tell you that we, uh, we have not changed. We have not moved ahead mm -hmm. because Dubai is today at 200 stories. Mm -hmm. And we are still at 23 because that building that I built 45 years back is still the tallest building in Dakar, which is a setback. To yeah, that's which is a big setback. That's the central bank. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, there are lessons learned here. Um, you went to the US very young. You went to a very good institution to be trained. Absolutely. You had the opportunity to stay in the US. And today, probably, you would have made more money. But there's something that's important. And, and for this show, it is good to really emphasize this that Africans who, are, who have been trained with a national wealth here, one way or the other, and they find their way to the West, they should find a way of coming back. That's the only way we can uplift Africa. And that's what you did, you know, 50 years ago. Absolutely, but let me just correct you in one thing. Mm -hmm. I would have probably done good, but I don't think one second mm -hmm. that I would have done better than I've been doing. Yeah for a very simple reason. Today, I have the opportunity to build brand new cities mm -hmm. for billions and billions of dollars, yeah. which I couldn't do. This opportunity is just in Africa. Yeah. You cannot have it somewhere else. Yeah. So to me, well, of course, it's by what people would call nationalism mm -hmm. that I came back. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it was the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because today what people have to know is that the opportunities you may have in Africa, mm -hmm. you cannot have it anywhere else in the world. Yep. Impossible. Great. Because of course, as you know, we have abundant resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, the floor is open and is full with opportunities. Great. But before you get there, I mean, I want to take you step by step. Yeah. Went to the U.S., studied, mm -hmm. came back home. Won uh, an international competition. So straight away, what did you do? You didn't work for anybody. You set up your own, your own business. Well, I started working with a French company, the people who were there for ages. It was during the colonial period. We were just after the colonial period. Yeah. Remember, we got independent in 1960, yep. and this is 1973, 73. 13 years after independence, yes. and these folks were still here. Mm -hmm. So I worked in a French company, mm -hmm. and then with uh, Mr. Shekngam, another mm -hmm. Senegalese mm -hmm. uh, senior, we formed, a, uh, we, we made a group, we formed mm -hmm. an association. And we uh, went to this international competition. Which year was this? Back in 1966, 67. Wow. So 67. Uh, I'm sorry. Seven, 77. 77. 76, 77. So you came back 73 and you worked. Three years later, we won an international. You won an international competition with a Senegalese. With, yeah, Shekngam. Shekngam. Uh, for which project was this? This was the comp international competition for the central bank. So the central bank located where? In Dakar. Central so bank take us in through Dakar. it. What, what, what's the structure like and your inspiration? Well, it's called the Baobab, the Baobab building because it was for the central bank and to us the uh, central bank should have, must have been uh, uh, identified with a baobab, mm -hmm. as you know, is a very strong, very, with a big roots. Mm -hmm. And to us, it meant two things. First, mm -hmm. the CFA, which is our currency, had to be rooted and strong. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a strong currency, mm -hmm. if, you have, if you don't have a money which is strong, you cannot make it. Mm -hmm. The other one is what uh, President Senghor he had a theory, you have to get down to your roots and open yourself to mm -hmm. the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to do. Yeah.